Lonnie, many thanks for joining us here on Talk Memphis this morning. Thanks a lot, and uh, thanks a lot for having us on the show to discuss uh, this important case and the efforts to um, uh, you know, free the innocent men uh, who are, are incarcerated, including Damien Eccles on death row. Man, what we're talking about is the West Memphis Three. For those who aren't familiar with this particular topic, it has been one that it, I guess a number of people have come to over time because these horrific murders in West Memphis, Arkansas, happened clear back on May 5th of 1993. As you mentioned, three men are in jail. And early on in this case, Lonnie, a lot of people in the area, I don't know if they were wild about all the evidence, but at the time, many people thought that they had gotten the right people for this horrific murder, but as the years have ticked off, there has been a lot of question about uh, the evidence used to convict these gentlemen. Well, yes, in fact, uh, the, you know, we, we had a panicked community, desperate police, impoverished defense attorneys, and a rush to du- judgment that condemned them. There was uh, no evidence that linked uh, the three young men to the crime, which was a horrific crime at the time. Three children were found murdered and dumped in a drainage ditch in, in a bayou in West Memphis, Arkansas. And um, other than, and, and immediately when the police found, actually there were juvenile officers, found the bodies, they targeted Damien Eccles, who was a, a young man who lived in the poor side of town in Marion, who had some, Damien had some minor run-ins with the police. He was... He was a smart young kid and a bit of a smart aleck as well. And uh, and uh, the juvenile officer, a guy by the name of Steve Jones, who was uh, for some reason on the search for the three little children, said uh, immediately, oh, this must be Damien Eccles' work, which was bizarre. And, and two days later, the police went to Damien's house, interviewed him. Of course, that he was home at the time. There was no evidence that linked him to the crime, no means, no motive, no opportunity. Uh, other than um, a lack of an investigation, and the police began building a case against him, and they dragged in one of his acquaintances, a kid by the name of Jesse Miss Kelly, who Jesse uh, still does, unfortunately, has an IQ of 67, uh, functionally uh, you know, illiterate, uh, functionally retarded. And Jesse uh, repeated back um, a confession, uh, what we call today a false confession, to the police and the way we know it was false and interestingly they gave jesse a lie detector test he passed it uh... but then the police told jesse uh... you didn't pass the lie detector test jesse tell us about the crime and uh... everybody knew about the crime by the time jesse was interviewed i mean the rumors and then the, the way the bodies were found and and jesse uh... went on to say that they grabbed the kids at nine in the morning well there was just one problem with jesse's first statement in that confession the kids were in school at nine in the morning the day of the murders and they were seen throughout the day and that began a process which resulted in the uh... immediate arrest of jesse miss kelly and and the arrest of jason baldwin and, and damien eccles and, and and a conviction and a panic community and and uh, allegations of satanism which was bizarre uh, you know bizarre and untrue and no evidence but a conviction and it's it's very it's not hard to get a conviction when you have a false confession Lonnie, that's why there's Miranda rules Lonnie let me ask you this um, there is a belief for many in the entertainment community Natalie Maines and other people hmm. that these three young men were railroaded do you believe that I think they were wrongfully convicted they're certainly wrongfully they're based on a false confession based on no evidence if you call that a railroad, it's, you know, we're, unfortunately, we're full of it. It happens in Tennessee, it happens in Arkansas, it happens in New York. I mean, one of the most famous wrongful conviction cases was a guy on death row named House in Tennessee that went all the way to the Supreme Court. So it happens in every state, in every municipality. These things happen. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, I'm not saying 100% of people in jail are wrongfully convicted, but if you thought 5 or 10%, you're talking hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of, of people who have been wrongfully convicted. And on death row, Damien Eccles faces the death penalty. Um, so you so want to make yes, sure... Railroaded? Uh, you know, was it a conspiracy? I don't know. Was it a wrongful conviction? Yes. Do they deserve their convictions overturned? God, yes. The evidence is there. New DNA evidence, new forensic evidence, new eyewitnesses, not to the murder, but eyewitnesses that, that uh, supply important information. So we're hopeful 
that this will turn around. Yeah, especially when you're talking about the death penalty. You want to make sure you get it right. Our guest here on Talk Memphis, we're talking with Lonnie Surrey. He's an advisor to Arkansas Take Action. Lonnie, I was one of the people that lived in West Memphis at the time of these killings in 1993. Mm-hmm. I, I remember the talk in the streets and around the town and with the community. This was so heinous, and this was, this was probably the first uh, national crime that we had heard about against three young boys it was just absolutely at, at every angle was so heinous yeah. the community was just screaming for justice and to find out who did this because we could not imagine uh, anyone doing this we uh, and, and the, the entire community was just like find who did this and make them pay yeah. and and as the community talked to the law enforcement and and insiders and everybody is in the know where my brother-in-law works for and he knows the guy who's investigating this or there was so much talk that they were certain that they had the right guys for the for the job and there were a lot of things that were ignored there was talk of of maybe one of the boys stepfathers being involved but everybody pushed those things aside and were so happy to have someone to blame so quickly that it really didn't get questioned for years and years what now what about all those other rumors that had circulated around at the time of the killings well, you know, and certainly we all understand that. Damien Echo is the first one to understand why why these things happen. He's such an incredible young man. Uh, so, you know, everybody understands the rush to judgment, the fear. You know, we all want to believe it's 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 some evil. We all want to believe how could these horrible things happen. But unfortunately, uh, what happens is what is necessary is good police work, a good investigation, and preservation of the crime scene, all the things that weren't done. Uh, the parents of the children, usually, not all the times, but many times in ch- child murder cases, it's a relative or a parent. Uh, we don't know what happened in this case. We do know that uh, there was no DNA found at the crime scene linking any uh, Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin, or Jesse Miss Kelly to the crime, the crime scene, or the three little boys. But there is uh, evidence linking one of the stepfathers to the crime scene. Mm-hmm. His a hair linked to his DNA was found in the knot used to tie up one of the boys, not even his own stepson. His name is Terry Hobbs. You know, Damien would be the first one not to accuse somebody else of wrongfully, but nevertheless, these are the facts out there. Uh, Terry Hobbs states uh, under oath that he didn't see the three boys the day of the murders, yet we have three new eyewitnesses who just came forward within the last few months who placed the three children in his possession immediately before they were murdered. Mm. Um, so, you know, we have a contradiction. Did Terry Hobbs kill the three boys? I don't know. Is he lying? I believe so. Yeah, and then there's a lot of questions still around that. As you mentioned, the DNA evidence points away from the people that are incarcerated for this. Lonnie, uh, we're going to take a break, but you've been uh, kind enough to uh, stay with us into the next segment. Sure. We'll uh, ask you some more questions. And also, if you have questions about the West Memphis Three, Lonnie has been gracious enough to uh, join us and take your phone calls at 683-0989. That's 683-0989. When we come back, we'll talk about the West Memphis Three. Weather-wise, what can you expect in Memphis?